Well, hello there. Bet you didn't expect this, cause neither did I. And yet I'm here, continuing my weird habit of uploading once every six months, talking about card games and making videos literally nobody asked for or wanted to see. Basically what I'm trying to say here is that today's target for some unsophisticated bullying will be Artifact, Valve's new and basically already dead card game. Now I don't really claim to be one of those prophets who seemingly knew all along that Artifact was doomed, but as a vivid CSGO and Half-Life fan, color me fucking surprised. As you may know, I happen to be slightly more familiar with Valve neglect and incompetence than the average Dota fan. That being said, even I never expected that out of these three games, Gwent would be the one that's actually doing well. Anyways, the tragic death or at least the drastic decline of Artifact's player base seems to be a pretty sad tale for all the Artifact fans out there. All ten of them. Nonetheless, I figure it's a good way to celebrate fucking nothing and revisit Artifact to see what exactly went wrong and where it all failed. And as far as I'm concerned, there are three main reasons behind Artifact's demise. That being financial, gameplay and external factors, which I'm going to try and cover today. And what's a better place to start than the financial issues Artifact faced? Partially because these were already a cause of concern back when the game was still in closed beta, and partially because nearly all of these concerns turned out to be true, and the current economy of Artifact is somehow even a bigger mess than the direction of this fucking channel. And before we can even get to the fuckfest that is the market and progression system in this game, there's one pretty big wall that has to be discussed first. In this case, it's a paywall. Now, implementing a paywall into your game isn't exactly the most unreasonable and groundbreaking thing to do. People have no problem throwing away hundreds of euros at some garbage every year, so what's the problem here? Well, the issue here is, of course, the market Artifact finds itself in. Every major multiplayer centered digital card game is free to play. The idea that you have to pay 20 euros for entry and on top of that obtain the entire collection seems extremely ludicrous to most people, considering that in every other card game you still have to obtain your collection, but you don't have to pay anything up front. Yes, I know that Artifact might still very well be a lot cheaper than all these other card games, but that doesn't really change the fact how the paywall is perceived by the majority of people. I know some of you may not be aware of this, but at a certain point in time, there was another card game that also happened to be behind a paywall, and required you to obtain your entire collection via market. This card game was known as Scrolls, and was developed by none other than the Minecraft developers themselves, Mojang. Nowadays Scrolls may come across as a bit of a fucking meme, considering that it died back in like 2015. However, for a brief period in time, it seemed like Scrolls would be the competitor to Hearthstone for years to come. So much so that some Einstein at Bethesda figured it was a good idea to sue Scrolls for using the word Scrolls in their name. Well, at least even they acknowledged that the whole Elder part was fucking irrelevant to begin with. Now, obviously, there were quite a lot of factors that contributed to the demise of Scrolls, but one of them was undoubtedly the price tag. Just imagine for a second what would happen to the Call of Duty and Battlefield rivalry if one of them randomly became free to play. It's really no coincidence that Mojang lowered the entry price of Scrolls over a period of time and eventually made it free to play altogether. So in theory, Valve should follow the same path, but this is exactly where the whole fuckfest part comes into play. Even if you ignore the fact that the game is kinda dead, and since you're here you've probably already done that, there's still that whole market and progression thing you have to take care of. Making Artifact free to play would likely obliterate the last remains of sanity in both, which is a bit of an issue considering that the market is basically the only real pull of the game. You have this game with no ladder, no ranked, no decent progression system that would provide a player with a continuous reason to play Artifact, so why the fuck should you even play this game? Well, if you're a massive pot of brains, you may say that it's the fat price pool that attracts you, but to us normal people, the biggest pull of Artifact is that there's this whole market where theoretically, if you're good enough, there's a possibility to continuously farm drafts and make loads of Steam money and finally buy some fucking shitty CCS ghost skin with it. Now I know this sounds exactly like some shady get rich quick scheme, and it is. In some sense, the entire Valve market is based on that. When you take into consideration that the target audience for Artifact was likely middle-aged hipsters with no job or friends that take pride in their chess ranking, aka good card game players, this get-rich-quick goal turns out to not even be that bad of an incentive to play the game. However, if you're really going to proceed with a game where the only playing incentive is market manipulation, you better have a pretty fucking stable market. Or in other words, the polar opposite of the Artifact market, which by now has crashed more times than this piece of shit program. And trust me, I counted. And yes, this also happens to be where the whole fuckfest happens. Your game isn't free and is competing with games that are free. Your quote unquote progression system is broken at best and caused an uncontrolled flood of new cars, which in turn caused the market to be even more unstable than the current American political situation. 
Now, I'm not really sure how to even solve this mess without just burning the whole game to the ground. Yet, one possible solution could be just simply adding rare items that aren't rare just because it's a good card. Yes, I'm talking about cosmetics or some other weird shit like that. In theory, these could act in a similar way that rare cosmetic items operate in CSGO or Dota, where they provide certain stability to the market and also help maintain the money-making pipe dream, even when the market is inevitably flooded with new cards causing everything to devalue. Instead, we have three aspects that are all dependent on one another and are all equally shitty and broken. Perhaps now you finally understand why I call the whole artifact economy a fuckfest. So before I alienate the last few remaining viewers, I'm going to swiftly move on to a completely different problematic artifact aspect that hopefully won't be as retarded as the previous one. This aspect being gameplay. And just in case hardcore artifact fans still haven't left an angry her der comment threatening to fucking stab me for trashing their game, I'm going to give them pretty good incentive to do so now. You see, most of them seem to believe that gameplay-wise Artifact is the perfect game, and while I agree that it has a very solid foundation and doesn't have any glaring fundamental issues like these other games, I still can't help but feel like certain aspects of it can make the game pretty fucking unbearable, especially for all newer players. You may take a wild guess that one of these is RNG and you don't doubt to be correct. However, RNG is by far the most fixable out of all the issues, so I don't want to dwell on it too long. In short, RNG is usually really important to card games because it is THE factor that makes each individual match you play unique and interesting. Not exactly a complicated concept considering that RNG is literally built into every single card game in the form of card draw for this exact reason. Yet somehow Valve still managed to miss the ball completely and went on to design cards and effects like this. Now, you may say that this seems to accomplish the task of making every match unique, but it actually achieves that by making every match uniquely shit. The problem with these coin flip cards like Cheating Death is that every time it is played, one player will always inevitably get screwed. There's no scenario in which this card is in any way, shape or form good for the game, it's just garbage card design, there's really not much else to it. Now of course there are loads of other random effects and artifacts that weren't designed by fucking buffoons. Some of these are a bit shitty, some are quite fine and even beneficial to the game. The only real issue I have here is the sheer volume of these effects and artifacts. There's way too much randomness, from the shaky mulligan to attack patterns and spawn positions. I feel like all these effects really add up over the course of the game. And the main cause of concern here is that these fucking heaps of random effects can both make defeats more frustrating and diminish your victories, which subsequently will result in further more negatively impacting game feel. And this is where we finally get to the main crux of my gameplay criticism, and it all revolves around game feel. A seemingly extremely subjective, abstract and elusive aspect of a game. Sounds like the perfect choice for criticism. Now despite me saying this, there are some pretty grounded concepts to game feel that can make a given game feel nearly universally enjoyable. In card games it usually comes down to how intuitive and interactive the game feels, the former being an important part of player input and the latter being the result of that input. Unfortunately, speaking purely from a new player's perspective, Artifact is without a fucking doubt the least intuitive card game I have ever played, and interactivity aspect is also pretty fucking abysmal. You see, contrary to games like Hearthstone where the plays are usually pretty clear cut until you inevitably have to make 2 to 4 important decisions that win or cost you the game. In Artifact, you get to make hundreds of smaller decisions that all contribute in some way, but as a result all of them feel very meaningless. It's kinda like donating 10 cents to some kind of massive charity. Yes, technically it contributes to some great cause, but to you and everyone else this contribution feels pretty fucking meaningless. And that's the key word here. Every decision you make throughout the course of an artifact game feels very shallow and pointless. It almost feels like you're doing stuff for the sake of doing it. The game is designed in such a way that you literally never get to see the merit of your decisions and whether they were correct, wrong or quite frankly shit, as you can imagine that does make the game pretty unintuitive to play. Even if you have years of experience with card games, when you first pick up Artifact you will likely find yourself in a state of confusion. The game is so all over the place that your decision making feels largely like throwing darts at the target blindfolded, only to find out there was no fucking target to begin with, so nobody even knows if you hit the fucking jackpot or not. It doesn't feel rewarding, it doesn't feel challenging, it just comes across as a bit dull to even play. Even such seemingly basic decisions as kill the bad guys are made to be as ambiguous as humanly possible, so you really would feel that tad bit more lost. I know some hardcore artifact players might try to bust out the classic get good, but it's not like decisions you have to make are even hard, they're just confusing. You're not left wondering which fucking mathematical equation you had to solve to win that game, but rather wondering how exactly did you even lose that game with no clear answers to this question in sight. Artifact fans can rave all they want about how complex and perfect the gameplay is. Fact is that the majority of people find artifact gameplay to not be fun. The game doesn't feel intuitive, it doesn't feel interactive, it's overflowing with at times needless RNG and this all combines for a really shitty new player's experience. 
And so you end up with this game which doesn't feel fun to play, there's no incentive to playing it because the economy is fucked, and it also has an entry barrier in the form of a paywall. Call me a hater, but that's a fucking recipe for disaster if I ever saw one. That being said, I haven't even gotten to the third part of the video, which is all the external factors that further contributed to the failure of the game. And when I say external factors, I mostly actually have Valve in mind. Now, not Richard Garfield and his boys, but Gabe and all the higher-ups in Valve responsible for the game. So I'm going to dedicate this whole segment to discuss what I like to call Valve Incompetence. And the best place to start here is the astounding resentment the original artifact trailer was met with. You see, much like this video, nobody actually asked or wanted to see artifact. The card game market was already seemingly flooded, and most Valve fanboys were expecting something completely different. However, the real issue stems from the fact that this just doesn't even seem like Valve, the company that built its name and became renowned worldwide for innovative and groundbreaking games that impacted the whole game medium as a whole. The idea that they would just pull a Blizzard-esque jump on a hot trend seemed unfathomable to most hardcore Valve fans. Especially when Valve already has tons of completely neglected and some semi-neglected game franchises of their own. And on top of that, one of the biggest money-making machines in the entire video game market in Steam. Largely due to how abysmal the competition is, Steam had completely dominated the video game distribution market over the last decade. Valve already seemingly had their hands and pockets completely full, so why even bother making this card game? Especially when you will just push it aside as soon as it shows the first signs of failure. Yes, Valve, you promised a 1 million prize pool for a tournament, but what else exactly did you do to contribute to the success of the game? Barely any support on Steam, barely any advertising, laying off people that worked on the game, and likely enforcing a shitty economic system upon the game just so you could wreak those profits. I think I made it abundantly clear that some of the game's faults rest solely on the developers, but I can't stress how much of the game's failure rests on Valve's shoulders. The developers at the very least tried their best to make the game successful, and unfortunately missed the mark in some ways. But at least they tried and I can respect the effort put into it. Valve on the other hand just used Artifact to quickly jump on the card game bandwagon and couldn't be barred to even put any real effort into that. Which is why I want to conclude this video by going back to the very start where I vaguely implied that the current Artifact situation didn't really surprise me. Valve isn't this world-renowned innovator and game developer anymore, but rather just a massive corporate entity. And much like any other corporate entity, their primary objective now is profit, even if it's at a cost of some rather unethical decisions. Now, luckily, it seems that the artifact developers still have some control over the game and could still potentially turn the sinking ship around. Although I wouldn't bet any money on it. So to any artifact fans that are still watching by chance, it only gets better from here. Unless the game gets cancelled altogether. But hey, at least the problem is gone then too. And to all the normal people watching, congratulations, you just spent however many minutes of your one and only life watching some fucking lunatic ramble about a dead game nobody cares about. And I appreciate you for sticking around. That being said, my yearly video is finally done. See you in six months, boys.